Okay, well, here we have something we've not covered before. And this is the York 863. It's coming in a bit of a state, but of course it's 30 years old. I'm just worried about what these rocker switches on the back. That's my only reservation. I've made up a microphone. Got it down to power lead. So we'll take it apart and see whether there's anything scary in it. Okay, the first thing I've noticed, that rocker switch, by the way, wasn't anything scary. It's not connected to anything. One of the wires to it goes to earth. I don't know what it was about. But uh, I plugged my mic in here, and we've got nothing because Captain Gas Poker has rewired it. So we'll just wire that back to standard, and then take it from there. Okay, after some very quick checks, I find that we've got receive, which proves the synthesizer is running. We've got no transmit, and it's supposed to have TX and RX lights, and the RX light is out. Uh, when I tried to remove the bulb, I discovered it's two bare wires, so I've pulled a new wire in the lamp from stock. Incidentally, these aren't cheap. We buy them in the hundreds at a time to get the right price break and still about 89 pence each so what I'll do I'll just put this lamp in and then I'll talk to you about why there's no transmit the first thing I'm going to do is check the VCO because it may not be transmitting because it's out of lock so we locate resistor 4 it's the far end there's resistor 4 the far end away from me is there the meter is reading oh I need on channel f what channel channel 40 so we're on channel 40 the meter is reading 4.1 on receive and the manual says it should be around about 4 volts so that's fine I'm now going to go into transmit and it should also be around about 4 volts and it's 3.28 that's fine I'm just going to check those on channel 1. Receive. I'm really wanting it to be more than 1.8 on uh, receive, and it's 2.3. And on transmit, it's 1.86, and the manual says 1.8. So we're spot on. So the VCO is locked. Now, the receive for VCO is that coil there. So if we hadn't got the 4 volts, we'd be on channel 14 trying to get 4 volts by adjusting that. And the transmit, the same applies, it's 4 volts at that resistor 4 test point with that trimmer capacitor there. So I haven't had to touch that, it's spot on, but it doesn't transmit. Now, we could do all kinds of tests. I could get the circuit diagram out. We could get an oscilloscope on it. We could do all kinds of things. But I'm going to cheat. When you're doing these commercially, there's some shortcuts that you find over years. I've got a monitor receiver here on channel 20. I'll set the check radius to channel 20. And we'll see whether it transmits a few in inches to this monitor receiver. The answer is, it does yes. But there's no audio. Well, that's another fault. And that's of course the mic gains at minimum. So, we know it's transmitting. So we, we know that the initial coils are actually set up correctly. So what I'm now going to do is to put my RF probe on the driver transistor. And the driver transistor is this one here so I have to I'll pause the camera I'm going to put the diode probe that's actually a homemade thing made in a pen these are these are commercially available and it's connected to an AVO meter it's basically a diode and a capacitor inside this pen housing the AVO meters on the microamp range and this will uh, turn RF into a slight voltage so I'm just going to do that off camera 
and for that very quick check with the diode probe I discovered that on the input side of the driver transistor I've got transmit but on the output side I've got nothing. I was also looking at the ammeter of my power supply it's currently 320 milliamps and it was hardly moving above 340 milliamps in transmit so nothing's drawing any current so I'm going to unsolder that driver transistor and I'll test it. Okay, so back with the York 863, I now have transmit. It was indeed the driver transistor. Uh, we have one of these quite sophisticated but simple to use Peak Atlas uh, component testers. I popped it on there and it said open circuit. So uh, put a new one in, end of problem. So now I'll do the proper tune up. So we've checked the VCO and so we know that's right. So what we'll now do, the radio is now doing 5 watts, but it nevertheless still needs to be done, have the tune-up done properly. The first one we're going to do on this is transformer 2, which is there. So I've gone into transmit, and we'll just peak that. Both of these say transformer 2 on my notes. They can't both be. And then the third one is transformer 4, which is the one under that wiring there at the back. <laughs> this is going to be fun, isn't it? I don't want to get it on an angle, you can end up breaking the core. And that's fine. The next one we do will be the hexagonal ones. L4. L8 centralizes the power throughout the channel, so we need to make sure that's peaked on channel 20, or you can end up with 2 watts on channel 1 and 6 watts on channel 40. And then finally we adjust the power on this type of radio with L9 and in this case it needs to just come down from 5 watts to 4, there we go. Next thing to do is to make sure that the meter on the front panel says 4 watts. When we key up it swings across and it hits the end stop. Um, the power meter on here is RV4. Incidentally, that driver transistor being faulty is absolutely classic of having a high SWR. It normally affects the driver transistor more than it would the output transistor. And we do the low power. So it's got a 10 decibel attenuator. So we'll switch that to low power. We should now have 0.4 of a watt. In actual fact, we've got... Um, 600 milliwatts. So I'll just pop that down. The adjustment is RV5. There we have it, 400 milliwatts. We'll check the radios on frequency. On channel 20, it should be 27.79125. It's slightly low. 27.79115 and although that's within tolerance I will just adjust it and that's the trimmer capacitor the red one just down here not to be confused with the red one there for the VCO there we have it 27.79127 so it's just my, uh, tiny bit high which gives it a bit more leeway as they drop with age naturally. Um, deviation. Switch the other camera on. So we're looking at the right hand oscilloscope.
and we have no mod. So I'll look into why that is. Right, again, I can when you're diagnosing something like why was there no transmitted audio, there's, there's very, very quick ways of doing this. If I'm in transmit and I'm going to touch a deviation control there, I'm going to expect some kind of noise coming out of my monitor receiver. And if I touch the microphone and put on the socket, I'm going to expect a noise coming out of the monitor receiver. So if I touch the um, uh, wires on the back of the uh, mic gain control, I expect some noise. Turns out the mic gain control was dirty, so I've cleaned that, and we now have transmitted audio. So there's my monitor receiver. Testing one, two. So that sorted that one out as well. Now back to the uh, setting the deviation up. can't see anything on the oscilloscope. Right, well the deviation is over the top. It's reading four and a half, which is ridiculous. Perhaps somebody's turned it up in desperation to try and wonder where the audio's gone. So that's reset that for two and a half. We'll just do the whistle chest here. <sighs> spot on. Wallow as well, that's spot on. And there we have, this is now set up on transmit. So I'll do a receive video, you can join me on there if you wish.